You know how many preachers are we taking up? They're all just tricking the book. He does the same thing over and over. Because you're too stupid to set yourself up so that you keep your vow. Keep women out your face. A woman, a woman comes to me and I'm like, no, no, stop, no. You see the ring? No, no. Because what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm, I'm protecting my wife from you, you scandal. You want to destroy her, you want to hurt her emotions, you want to destroy her feelings, and you want her to be like you. Hurt, and bitter, and out there trying to steal somebody else's man. I'm not going to let Because I'm going to protect my wife from the wolf, I'm going to protect her from the bear, I'm going to protect her from the robber, and I'm going to protect her from you, hussy. Hussy. Trust me with your, your forgiveness. Yeah, yeah. Somebody asked. This beautiful young lady here. Somebody asked her, what is marriage? Somebody asked her, what is marriage? And this is her answer. Her answer is this complex labyrinth. Is this what marriage is? This is what unmarried people see when you ask them what is marriage. They see this big problem. They see this big algebraic problem. This is what divorced people see. And they've already gone through divorce. This is their this is their idea of what marriage was. But this is not God's design. God's design is not for marriage to be complex or difficult. This is actually Satan's design. Because Satan doesn't like marriage, in case you didn't know. Think about this. Satan never got married, got involved with Adam until he was married. Sin only entered in the world. After there was a thing called marriage. Think about that. Satan was in the garden without you. You don't read anything. There had no there was nothing going on. Until he got married. He hates marriage. He hates the union of marriage. Satan didn't care about Adam until he got married. And that's why some people, we know people personally that have been together for years. I know one person together for 10 years. They didn't have any problems. They lived together for 10 years. They didn't even have a kid. They didn't have any problems until they got married. Explain that. Living, living together is not the solution. Some people feel that's what this world is teaching. Like you live together first, you figure out the person. The devil don't care about you living together. He doesn't care about you coexisting. He doesn't care about you cohabitating. He cares about your vows. He cares about the stuff that you promised on the altar. He cares about your devotion to God. He cares about you following the principles of the Bible. He cares about what you say you're going to do, and he's going to try his best. Take that out your mouth. Make sure you don't do it. Did you know two people who can live together in harmony? We talked about this last week. In jail. But two saved people, full of the Holy Ghost, got the Bible. They have a hard time. Why is that? Why is, why is marriage so complicated? Marriage is only complicated if you don't understand. If you don't understand its origin, where it came from, where it started. If you don't understand the concept. If you don't understand that marriage is ministry. Just that simple. Marriage is just it. God designed your life with the intent and the purpose of ministering to your spouse. Your, everything you went through, all your childhood, everything that happened to you was set up and designed for you to minister to that person that God sent in your life. That woman in your life is there for one purpose in your life to minister to you. Somebody said marriage is 50 50, and that's a devil's lie. Marriage is 100 0. I'm working for the Lord. I'm doing a job for the Lord. I'm going to give everything I got into this marriage with no expectation of anything. You don't hold me in. And I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing a job for the Lord. I'm ministering to you for the Lord. Just like this ministry, we minister to God's people without expecting anything back from them. Nothing. That's what ministry, marriage is. That's what ministry is. That's my wife. If she needs something, I'm going to do it. She will not have to do anything back from me. There's no tip for that. You don't owe me nothing. But imagine if I'm giving you 100%. And you giving me 100%, that's 200%, right? So even if I get sick or if I fail or if I stumble, if I mess up, we still above 100%. Always. We'll always be up. If we fa if I fail and I gain 50%, we're still at 150, right? This marriage will never be 50-50. Divorce is 50-50. God who created an ordained marriage has given us all directions. How often can we look over the, the, the directions, the, the, the instructions that God gave us? Most people, when they think about marriage, they go to Corinthians. Paul dealt with specific people. He dealt with marriage head-on in his, in his organization that he had set up. And 
And that's all. But the entire Bible is set up for marriage. God married his people and he's showing he's coming back for his bride. Everything in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation through their pocket, all of it is set up to show you how important marriage is. God hates divorce. There's not a whole lot of things he hates. He hates divorce. He hates it. So he gave you tools to prevent it. He gave you ways to, to make sure that never happens. And if, if both of you, if two people follow all the words of the Bible, if you follow all of the Lord's words, you will never get a divorce. It will never fail if both of you do exactly what the Bible says. If I asked you, what is the point? If I asked you, what is the purpose of marriage? What would you say? Before you answer, why wouldn't you go to the Bible? Most people won't go to the Bible for everything. Most people don't have a scripture for everything. Most people don't have a structure and a foundation of the Bible for everything they do. And you should. Why, why is God taboo in anything that you do? Why is it a bad thing to have God involved in it? Especially marriage. I want God in everything I do. I want to feel his presence every time I do anything I do. If I go get something to eat, Lord bless this food. If I go out the door, Lord keep me safe. Watch over my family. Bless me. I want everything I do, especially marriage. I want God all in it. All wrapped up in it. So God's original plan for man concerning a woman, God originally created, when he first created a woman, woman was God's solution to God, to man's loneliness. That is the only solution there is for man's loneliness, is a woman. And God is so nice, he brought him a naked woman. How nice is that? Can you imagine <laughs> what she looked like? Perfect. Can you imagine and he brought, the Bible says he brought her and said to see what Adam would think. That means he's showing off, look what I did. Look at this Adam. Can you imagine what Eve looked like? Can you imagine how bad she was? But she, God never brought Adam a slave. He never brought Adam a concubine. He never brought Adam a doormat. He brought him a wife. It's that wife that you need. Man can't live with alone. It's not good for a man to be alone. That's just the Bible. A man has to have that void filled by a wife, not a woman, not no ordinary woman, not no girlfriend. God knows what we need. He created us with that need so that then you can worship him because he provided that need. Look how awesome God is. Yes, he is. So today we're here for some solutions. In this particular class, I'm not going to deal with any individual particular situations. I'm dealing today with today. I'm dealing with marriage today. I'm dealing with what's going on today and the future. That's my assignment. That's what I'm here for. So we're here for marriage hacks. Okay. I, I don't know if that's the best word I should be using for it, but just marriage hacks. Just tools, tricks in the trade. So when me and my wife got married, we spent the entire summer going to people's houses who were married. And it didn't matter how long they were married. Sometimes you might get a little bit better from people who marry shorter time because they're more relevant. You know, the, the, the grandparents that's been married for 60 years. It's a different time set. Y'all minds are different. Y'all they y'all don't divorce. Y'all ain't going nowhere. Y'all don't have the temptations. Y'all don't go to clubs. And he, he's not, you don't have to deal with him on his cell phone with issues like that. They don't have to deal with that. So it's a little better sometimes when we go to a couple that's been married for a shorter time because we can learn what, what we need to deal with right away. They deal with that, the financial issues right away. The 60-year-old couple, they stop it. Money is not an issue for them. You got it all taken care of. So we went and we sat, we spent the entire Saturday with several people. And one time we was at their grandparents' house and we was there all day. And they got into a fight. And they were so embarrassed after they realized that they were arguing. And I told them, no, this is good. I see how y'all fight. You didn't scream, you didn't raise your voice, you didn't hit the little bell, y'all didn't get out your chair, nobody pointing fingers. This was good, we know now how to have a you said what you, your your point, you made your point. She understood your point, she made her point. That's it, that was great. We needed to see that. We So that's what I wanna do today. I wanna give some of those um, type of marriage hacks. Also, every time we went to a seminar, every time the church had seminars, a marriage type of thing, one of us went. And we, we, we got a lot of information from that and we're gonna try to share some of that with you today. We set ourselves up real early. And one of the things we did, we took the top three things that causes divorce, and we iron those out right away. Whatever most people are getting divorced over, we gotta make sure we don't have those issues at all. Those top three things, got those out of the way. 
and we created some some boundaries and some safeguards based on those things. You know what those top three things are? I remember one with money. One money. for the number, top one, believe it or not, is financial. The majority of reasons why people divorce is financial issues. So we made sure we get what get whatever you have to do, whatever works for you. I know that there are people I met a couple who they're fighting over. It was, I don't want to, it didn't make sense. I don't want to say it doesn't make sense because people, everybody is different, but that, that the issue that they had could have been ironed out before you even got married. This is how we're going to do money. This is how we're going to do bills and just and be done with it. We don't have discussions about money at all. It's just a non-issue. My money, every dime I got goes directly into my wife's account and I'm done with it. Nothing to talk about. As long as I got something to eat, as long as the lights are on, I'm good. I don't care. As long as I have clothes, I'm good. I don't, I don't, I don't have an issue with that. And I did exactly what I saw my father do. When he came home from work Friday, he had my mother to check. My mother took care of the house, took care of the kids, took care of everything. And it was a lot of issue. He, I don't need money. I just need my family. I'm here for my wife. I'm here for my family. And I, my work is to benefit them. That's what I'm here for. So since we set up some safeguards, that helped us become pro spouses. And that's what I want to do today. I want to help you guys go from just being a spouse to a pro spouse. And that's going to, it's going to be some hard work. It's going to require some change. Here's one. I'm going to give you, this is, a, I'm going to show you what I'm, what the goal is today. So you guys can relax, be calm, and this is not anything uh, intu intruded. I'm not intrusive, rather. I'm not trying to get into anybody's business. I'm just going to give you some hats. Here's one. It's not easy to be a, a marriage pro or a, a pro spouse, but it's possible. And it's going to take some work. But since y'all already committed, you're already here, y'all already watching this, you've already committed to it, that's good. That's a good start. Romans 14, 19. It says, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify one another. So this is your first assignment. Your first assignment is to practice Romans 14. So I actually took this picture, by the way. Your husband just cooked some fish. You won't need paper for this one. Not, not yet. Your husband just cooked some fish. Or he brought you a gift. I don't know. I, I need an analogy. I don't know. You need to make peace and you need to edify. Who wants to go first? I'm going to start with you. You can, it, whether he cooked a meal and it looked like that, or he gave you a gift and it's a mess, I need you to show how you can say something in peace and how you can edify him. All, although it's a mess, although it's something you don't like, although it's not a Healing is not a, a pleasing. You have the ability within you to edify him. You do have that. And you have the ability to say something peaceful. Because there's words you can say that are called strife and cause problems. What the heck is this? I asked for, for tilapia. I asked for salmon. And you gave what? Well, you could do that. And now you got to fight. And, the, and now you're against the Bible. Because the Bible just told you to use words that bring peace. What you got? Thank you so much for cooking on dinner for me. I like that stuff. She av avoided it. <laughs> it works. <laughs> she didn't deal with it. She offered affirmations. She edified you. She yeah. she pointed out that you did do something that she wanted. You cooked. She wanted that. And she thanked you for it. That's excellent. Good job. That, that's the first assignment. See, this is easy. It's really easy. This, but this is also principles that you can keep in your marriage. If you did that every time, if you did that every time, just never say anything negative or non-edifying. Never say anything that's non peaceful. If you took this one scripture, see, you can't just go to Corinthians. You got to use the whole Bible. These are the hacks. The Bible is a hack. If you did just that every time, you didn't have any problem. So I need y'all. I need y'all to 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 promise that you will do these hacks. I need y'all to do that within yourself, or you can promise each other. I'm gonna give y'all some hacks. I need y'all to. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So can you do that? Can you? If there's an issue. Can you, whether you promise yourself or whether you promise your wife, can you within yourself make sure I'm going to say stuff that's peaceful and it brings peace and I'm going to edify you? Because you can't do things that will bring anger. You can't do things that will cause problems. You can't. Here's another one. All right, this is hack two. Proverbs 15 1. How do you have people sitting on a park bench arguing? How does that even happen? How do you get there? You're at a park. It's a happy day. It's a great thing. You got slides, you got swings, you got birds chirping, you got greenery, you got nature. How are you arguing? Why argue when the Bible says a soft answer will destroy the spirit of anger? Did you catch that? If you read that, that's what it's saying. You have to know who wrath is. 
You have to know who that person is, who that spirit or that entity is. I can't go into that now. But the Bible is giving you rules on how to deal with spirits. This spirit right here, it obeys soft answers. It turns it away. It works every time. I left my socks on the kitchen counter. And you're heated because you just cleaned the whole house. I just took my dirty socks out and left it on the kitchen counter. So you got to give me a soft answer. Wait. No. You did. You left your socks on the counter. Now I am. Huh? I'm part of I'm part of the tribe of Benjamin, so I can't handle that at all. So now I need to. I'm heated. I'm very upset. I just cleaned the house and you left your uh, wonderful, lovely smelling socks on the counter. <laughs> you need to show me how you would respond in a soft answer that would turn away the spirit. Of wrath. I would say, honey, you probably forgot because you were doing a lot of things, but you left your socks on the counter. You don't want to contaminate the counter. That's soft, right? I'm heated, I'm mad, but when calling me honey, starting off with honey, addressing the issue specifically, not trying to beat around the bush, not bringing up old stuff, you're always doing that. Just nice and soft. That spirit of anger, I have nowhere to go. I have nothing else to say. What can I say? What, what, what can I do with it? I can continue fighting, that means it's done, right? That's, a, that's, that's an example of a soft answer. Can y'all agree to do that? When there's an issue, use a soft yeah. Okay. What's an example of a grievous word that stirs up anger in that same situation? Fool. Hmm? Fool. Is that calling names and that type of thing? Can you? Oh. Is there an example of a, a grievous word that you could use for that same situation that you probably think, well, I'm just it's letting you know. It's the tone also. Tone, just, yes. It's not just what you're saying. Right. right. So a non-soft your, tone. Your tone your needs to be soft. Language. Yes. Mm -hmm. Everything about it needs to be soft. And that spirit of anger that would rise up and now you have to deal with it. You just protected your spouse from that spirit of anger that's going to come up later on tonight or tomorrow and cause worse problems. See, this is easy. Marriage is easy. This is number three. This is the easy one. And this is our savior. This is what we do for us personally. This is our number one hack that we use. The Bible understands that you will get angry. Okay? It's not a sin to get angry. But the manifestation of that anger, the display of that anger is the problem. Okay? The words that you choose, you chose this word. The word that you choose can stir up that spirit of anger or it can turn away the spirit of wrath. Your choice, your word is up to you. You have to recognize, you have to understand that you're not fighting with your spouse. It's that spirit that's in them. It's that spirit that's hovering around them that you're fighting with. Because we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, right? You have to recognize that. It's that spirit that you're fighting with. And you have to deal with that spirit. That's why you're literally wasting your time arguing. That spirit is fighting them and it's fighting you at the same time you haven't recognized that you're fighting the flesh. It doesn't make sense. The Bible says, be angry, it's okay, but shut your mouth. Be angry, it's okay, but don't sin. Be angry, but fix it. Or get over it. What does it say? When what what is the time limit listed by the word of God to get over an issue? Before the sun goes down. The Bible literally says that. I did not write that. The Bible says, be angry, don't sin, don't let the sun go down on that anger. Fix it before the sun goes down. I didn't write it. You have to deal with that. That's the Bible. I'm not going to argue with her about yesterday. <laughs> yesterday stuff is yesterday stuff. So I have to figure out a way to deal with it. There's a lot of ways to deal with it. There's a lot of hacks. There's, we can write notes. We can text. We can do video. There's a lot of ways to deal with it. But at some point, we're going to have to stop. The sun went down. The blinds just closed. The lights came on. Okay. Let's pray now. Let's sing a song. Let's move on. Right? Because... I'm not going to spend the whole day mad about a yesterday issue or this morning issue because I'm mad enough to let it go. I'm strong enough to let it go. That's what it takes. It takes me to say, I don't have to win this. I don't have to win everybody. I don't have to win this argument. And plus, argument is silly. It doesn't make sense. Did you know that I just gave you three ways to deal with spirits and not flesh or blood? Or the person, 
Okay? I deal with spirits. I don't deal with people because I know that spirits control people. And people are just a pawn of the spirit. If you fix the spirit, you got a whole better person. So, you are a spouse and you have a spouse. But are you a professional spouse? Hmm? Are you a professional spouse? Well, that's the goal today. When y'all leave here today, you're going to be a professional spouse. You're going to go from being married to being biblically married. Oh, man, that sounds good. How much of your marriage is based on the Bible? How much of your daily life? How much of your daily marriage? What portion of your marriage specifically is based on the word of God? This is an evaluation for yourself within yourself. How much of my marriage is based on the word of God? Because we need to be wrapped up. We need to be tied up. We need to be bundled up in the word of God. We need it all around us because we don't wrestle with flesh and blood that's why you must take on the whole armor of God. What is the whole armor of God? The whole armor of God is the word, the Holy Ghost, all of it. Praise, worship, prayer. The Bible says that's why you need as much God as you can get in your relationship. You need him to help you fight the spirits. You need him to help you fight the spirits that's in your spouse that's been there since childhood. You can't fight that. And you can't fight his flesh to get it out. He can't get it out either. You need you. That's why you need as much God. That's why you need these principles. That's why you need these scriptures. So you can stop fighting with him. Because he's already fighting or she's already fighting with these spirits that came from a broken family from birth. Stop trying to go it alone and get the word in your marriage. Get God in your marriage. So today we're going to fight some spirits. Lord, help us. Lord, help me. Lord, anoint me for your work in Jesus' name. Today we're going to fight some spirits. <laughs> That's why. This, this is the reason why I need some strong Holy Ghost powerful men in this ministry to help me. I am begging. Hey, you too. I'm begging for help. I need help. I need some strong, powerful Holy Ghost men to help me fight some demons, especially this year. God has charged me with some tough stuff. Some messages that I'm going to bring out is some tough stuff. I need help. I'm begging for as much help as I can, and I need the powerful men to do that because men can fight spirits. Show me in the Bible where a woman ever cast out a devil. Give me the scripture where a woman ever dealt with a demon and cast out a devil. Sorry. I have some rules that I need you all to follow. I need you to trust me, and I need you all to follow these rules. Thank so God. I need you all to agree to a few things. Number one, I need you all to agree that you will work hard after this to apply every principle you learned today to your marriage. I need y'all to agree to that. I need y'all to not talk to each other until I instruct you to today. And then I need y'all to do the exercises. The exercises today are mandatory. I need y'all to do the exercises today. Can y'all do that? No cheap shots. No under the belt. No kicking between the legs. We got that's No sucker punches, right? We got to understand that we're here for solutions. We're here for ha for hacks, and we're here to help. Is it okay to get help? That's the reason God requires fellowship. That's why we have to fellowship, because you got to get what you need from somebody else. That's how God set it up. Like you said, I am sharp as iron. I have needs. You guys help us. We're helping you. That's why we have to fellowship. It's necessary. Is what they're doing here, is what this couple doing here, is it productive? What's what's wrong here? What do you see that's wrong here? The body language. Okay. What do you see that's wrong here? That's good. What's wrong here? They're sitting in public, arguing. Okay. Who said they're arguing? What makes you think they're arguing? Because he's talking with his hands. The body language, like you yeah. said. They, you don't hear anything. There's no sound. But you know they're arguing. I have a disagreement. If, if, if he was, whatever he's saying right now, if he was calm, and if he used a soft answer, I can guarantee you his hands wouldn't be up. That spirit is making him. That spirit is charging him and controlling him. And it, he could be saying something nice, but then he's allowing that spirit to control him. We, we know they're arguing based on their body language. Neither of them are looking for a solution. If you look carefully, they're talking at the same time. So they're not even listening to each other. They're just rattling off words. And the baby is being fed all this negativity. Just giving it all to him. That spirit is just hovering around that baby now. And 20 years later, when that baby has an angry spirit, we wonder where it came. Because you're loud, your own personal can't stop, your own want to be 
edified your own whatever it is that you want. You didn't think about the kids because now the kids are being hurt by that same spirit that you want to deal with. You want to deal with your spirit inside of you. You want to deal with the spirit inside of your spouse. You just want what you want. And see, this is a breeding ground for an angry spirit to fester. This is how it starts. And if you know anything about spirits, they always call other spirits with them. They never work alone. Remember when Jesus cast the demons out of mm -hmm. Legion? What did they say? They didn't say don't cast us out. Don't cast us out of this region. We've been working this region. We've got all our homies here. Just let us stay here because we worked this up. We need to stay here, Jesus. Not sure why he said, okay. They didn't mind getting cast out. They didn't mind going in pigs. They didn't mind the pigs drowning. Because as soon as the pigs drowning, they can just keep working in the same area. So this is our first assignment. The Bible does say that we wrestle not with flesh and blood. Freya is a tech writer and she's a pro gamer. Her background... She went to, uh, no, she writes a tech blog. And she has a, her own gaming channel. What else? She also is a professional gamer for esports. Mm -hmm. Okay. How does, you're about to marry Freya. How does Freya's life fit with yours? So let's just, let's say Freya was a, uh, a guy. How, and this is the background. How does Freya's life fit with yours? Because... You might have missed what I said. She was a professional gamer for esports. If, if Freya mm -hmm. is a gamer for esports and you don't understand how big esports is, mm -hmm. you can't communicate with Freya. Right. Y'all ain't got nothing to talk about because that's the biggest thing in her life. You ever you ever see a kid and the, the doll head fall off? Their, their, their life is over. <laughs> you can't live anymore. And then you take the head, put it right back on in there. To them, in their world, that is the most important thing to me, and I can't see anything else. And that's okay, because at your age, that's what you can handle. That's what your circle is. That's what God gave you. That's your plot. That's what you do. This is what Freya does. If you are if you don't comprehend, if you don't understand Freya, can you marry her? You How does your her? skills and your abilities and your likes and your dislikes work with hers? What if it doesn't? What if you think it's fooliness? play a game. Right. And you don't know that there's millionaires playing games. What does that mean? And this is what she does. Right. Her career killed in a single game is what that means. That means that's a that's big a thing for game. Freya. And if you are going to marry that's Freya, or if you're going to marry somebody like Freya, this I haven't been able to achieve that. That's you, pretty cool. Yeah. You've got you've got I, I just put it up. Yeah. What number should I put? It depends because it's per game, a minute. Per well, game. this is Apex Legends. I don't even know what Apex. I was going to ask that. What okay, so Apex Legends, you ain't getting fifty five. No, nah. you get thirteen, fifteen, Maybe ten. You can hack and get twenty. So while you're playing a game, if you kill, you kill fifty five people. That's really good. Oh. But the point of this is, there's a lot of people that say stupid, it's dumb. That's a big achievement for somebody. Yeah. And you can't take somebody's big achievement and poo poo it and make it nothing. Whatever it is, I baked a cake today. You can't do that. I'm a I'm a I'm a nurse. Well, I could be a doctor. I'm an orthodontist. Oh, I'm a hygienist. Right. Why are you not a dentist? Right. Why don't you become the? You see what I'm saying? No, you 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 deal with people on a level, and you leave them alone. Or oh, they right. tell, they tell no. dentists they're not doctors. Mm -hmm. So in, included in her background is everything that surrounds that. Yeah. The fight that she had with the guy when she was playing that game. The, the, the way that, uh, everything that has to do with this is included in this person, and if you can't. Deal with the background that she has. You can't get married to this person and have a successful marriage. In her background is all of her pain. All the pain she went through, all the trauma she's ever dealt with is in her background. All of her memories, her nightmares, her proclivities, the stuff that she's afraid of. We were in Hawaii. Me and my wife went to see the sun come up. We were on the beach. Nobody's out there. It's absolutely beautiful. The, the holes start opening up in the floor. Crabs start coming out. She freaks out. I never knew she was afraid of crabs. I had to literally pick her up and carry her. I don't even know how long it was. It was a long walk. I had to literally carry her in, the, in, in my arms. The best thing about it was she's holding on to me for dear life. I mean, she's almost choking me because she's scared to death. And I'm glad I was there for her. But, but that trauma, that, that, that's trauma for her then. But where did that fear develop? I have to be able to deal with that. What if she was 600 pounds and I can't carry her? What or 
What if I said, just walk? It's not a big deal. They're not going to do nothing to you. See the problem? I have to deal with her, 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 what she's afraid of. I have to deal with her proclivities. I have to deal with her nightmares. I have to deal with the stuff that she's afraid of and the people that she's afraid of. How many of those things that I just mentioned can you dismiss? Can I dismiss the, the, your memories, your traumas? There's some things that I went through in my life. I, I can't just get over it. And there's some things I'll never get over. I touched the little baby when she was three months old in the, in the coffin. I'll never get over that. I don't know why my mother made me do that. It, I've had nightmares for years. Can't do it. I will never go to a funeral. I can't see a person in the car. I can't do it. Because that's a trauma for me. Now, what if what if somebody dies and my wife says, no, go on, damn, touch him. I'm going to freak out in the, in the church. It's going to be a problem. And you didn't know that. And now we're going to fight because why are you freaking out? All you got to do is just touch him. All I asked you to do. Well, I didn't say it like that. You see what happens? You have to deal with what's inside of me. You have to deal with my background. And whatever it is, you better make that decision before you marry that person. You marry their background. You marry their history. You marry their pain. It's yours now. You marry their demons. You marry those spirits that haunt them. He doesn't go away when he moves right in with you. He comes along with you. You can't dismiss any of them. How many of those things, those pains, those, those traumas are caused by you. How many of those traumas, how many of those nightmares, how many of those things she's afraid of, how many of those proclivities, how many of those things in her background are your fault? What are those things that hurt her feelings? Is it petty? There are things that hurt her feelings. There are things that she's born with that hurt her feelings. There's things that happened throughout her life that hurt her feelings. How many of those can you just ignore? How many of them do you know? Because you can trigger something. By saying something that hurts her feelings and you don't know her feelings are hurt and you move on and you think it's no big deal. Marriage is not for everybody, man. You'll ruin somebody's life. You got to get this right. It's nothing that's going on with her is petty. Emotions are not petty. Emotions are necessary. It's a tool. They typically last 15 seconds and they're there to let you know something. And what you should do is you should address that emotion. Okay, I'm sad. Why am I sad? Because it's the holidays, and it's the first holiday that I don't have my father. So that makes me sad. I address that. Is that normal? Yeah, that's normal. Everybody goes through that. This is, this is a normal thing. Okay. See? That was an emotion. 15 seconds, I'm done. Move done. But to poo-poo that? Ah, oh, my mama died too. My dad died too. You're, what the heck is wrong with you? You're you still crying? You don't cry yet? <laughs> She likes to play Apex Legends, okay? Or Call of Duty, whatever. Is that petty? That's what she likes. That's what she does. That's her background. That's how she makes her money. That's what she do. Are you a spouse that can't get it? Are you a spouse that can't just, I mean, what do you do? Just don't, don't have anything to do with it. Don't try to figure it out. Don't try to get involved. Don't try to learn it. There's YouTube videos you can go and learn. You can ask. You get, just don't have anything to do with it. Me personally, can you imagine if I married an agnostic? If I married somebody who wasn't a, a person who loved God, it just wouldn't work. They would not get me. They wouldn't understand me. They wouldn't get so much that just wouldn't work. My background means something. The years I spent in church, I have to talk about that. I have to tell you about that. I have to tell you about my experience. I have to tell you about the pain that I had, the stuff that I did in church, the hours I spent tearing for the oil. I have to talk about that. That's part of me, and you need to be interested in it. If you're not, then I'm going to start thinking there's something wrong with me. I'm going to start thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't be talking. Maybe I shouldn't be feeling it. And now you got a whole other problem because now I'm disgruntled, I'm upset, and I have low self-esteem, all because of just communication. The, these, these conversations have to happen early. We have to talk about this stuff early. That's why I will never marry somebody I don't counsel, ever, because it's necessary to get this stuff out and find out, is this even a match? What, are, what about Freya are you willing to abide? What are you willing to forego? What are you what are you willing to change? Are you are is do you have to change anything about her? Or can you accept her the way she is? This is this nice girl, right? Nice looking girl. She probably got all the amenities you want, whatever it is that you want in your girl. And you you you, you got exactly what you want, right? You got what you want in this girl, but do you want her demons? Do you want her pain? Her do you want do you want the things that trigger her? Because there's things that trigger each person. Do you want those? Can you deal with it? Are you man enough? Are you woman enough to do it? But since y'all are not, not talking, since y'all are already married, you don't have a choice. 
You can't choose now. You just have to deal with it. You have to deal with each other's triggers and spirits and nightmares and proclivities and pains and things I like and things I hate and food I don't want to eat. I have, I told somebody I haven't eaten a banana in like 43 years and they're like, ah, what? I just don't. I have trauma with the banana. I will never <laughs> eat a banana. I had a bad experience. It will never happen. I don't care. I, this is why I, I cringe when I hear young people say they want to get married. You have no idea what you're doing. You don't, you can't, you, can you really comprehend what you're getting into? You, you know what you're getting into when you're talking about marrying somebody's demons? All right. So this is, this is a quick one. This is why y'all need a paper really quick. I need y'all to write down your bucket list. This is mine. Just to give y'all an idea. And then when you're done writing down your bucket list, I need you to trade it with your spouse. If you don't have aspirations, if you don't have ambitions, how can you ever be happy? Because you never get the stuff you want. And you're probably wondering why you're walking around miserable all the time because you don't know what you want. So you can never be happy because you never get what you want. And you never and you don't have anything to wake up for. Tomorrow I'm waking up and I'm working towards this. I'm working towards this goal. I'm going to wake up. You know how good I'm going to feel when I start booking the trip to go see the Northern Lights? That's a good feeling. I'm not mad at it. How can I be upset? I'm looking at wherever I'm going, whether it's Alaska, whether I'm going to be on food, whatever it is. I'm looking at the hotels. Just that alone, when you start working towards these bucket lists, it's a good thing. So, we can probably finish it later. We're going to kind of keep moving. Whatever you have, let's trade that with your spouse. This, this is nice. To visit each continent. There's only seven. We can do that. We don't want that already. So, that's good. We got six, six continents. We sit the next six years. Let's do it. That's easy. See that? See the smile on my face? Because I have found something I can give my wife and make her happy. You see that? Now, Here's the question. Here's the question. When you read all of those things, look at me. When you read, look at me. Look at me. When you read those things, did you know all of those things? Think about how long you've been met. Did you know all of those things? Yeah. Pretty much. Okay, that's good. You know all of those things. How many of those things are you currently working on? All of them. I am. That's good. That's good. You see how you can offer happiness to somebody? You can just give them what they want. You can just give them what they ask. Mm -hmm. This is this is this is good stuff. You can work towards that and not work worry of how would you feel if if you are actually actively working on planning to, for example, go to Northern Lights and then she leaves her socks on the counter. It's not that big of a deal at that point, right? Because we're we're booking this. So I forget about the sock. Come look at this hotel I just found. It got a glass ceiling. You know we're not talking about socks right now. Y'all finish the bucket list later on. And y'all have something to look forward to, something to work on. And now, when you're making decisions, well, maybe we shouldn't move here because we have to do this. Or maybe we can't buy this car because we need money for this. And maybe I'm going to put some of my bucket list back so that you can get yours because I'm a good man like that. Yes, 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 yes. How can you offer happiness if you don't know what makes the person happy? Deuteronomy 24, 5. When a man have taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war. So if a man is a soldier or if they're calling for war, the law is... New war. The, the, if you get, yes, you got a brand new wife, you got a nice, lovely wife, you cannot go out to war. What else? Neither shall he be charged with any business. We can't, we can't have you, uh, we're not going to have you um, um, on the construction crew building a new thing or you have to go away and take trips and all that type of stuff because you have you have a charge. But he shall be free at home one year and shall He should be a free at home. We're going to give you one year. This is the Bible. When we get to New Jerusalem, these laws will be in place. They don't change. God is not going to come up with a new set of laws. These are the laws that's going to be in place then. Unfortunately, while we're living in the diaspora, we can't con con we can't stay home for a year, but we get it. What else does it say? And shall cheer up his wife, which he have taken. How long? A year. A year. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. This is a this is a to a man. Have you given your wife? Have you given your wife? One full year of cheering up like the Bible requires. What's the red word say? Pay up. It's time to pay up. You owe your wife a full year of cheering up. And all the wives said amen. amen. It's, yeah, amen. I, I, don't shut me down. Don't shut <laughs> me down. I'm going to give you a full year of making you happy. Okay. You'll get more yes than no's. Because I'm a good guy like that. Can you do that? <laughs> We have to do all of these exercises. Yeah, yeah. Like in 2023. 2024, we're talking about something else. 2023. 2025, 26. That's a day. I got the Bible says one year. That's all you get. You're going to give one full year of making 
that woman had starting on the third. You got a bucket list. <laughs> well, I mean, you can start today and it'd be one year for 365 days, or you can wait and just say the beginning of the year. Can you do that? Yeah. That's, I'm going to do that. That's a full yes. That means, like, uh, I get a yes, yes, whatever I want from you. Uh, the best of my ability. The best of my ability. To the best of my ability. <laughs> then you got the bucket list. That's cheering her up. And what that also means, I can't tick you off because the clock starts again. Mm -hmm. now, that's the new day. <laughs> Starts over a whole new year again. Read, read that scripture. What does it say? When a man is taking a wife, you owe that woman a full year. But I didn't write this. Hmm? It didn't say start over. You, okay, if you don't start over, let's say you gave her six months and then you made her angry because of whatever reason. So have you given her a year? You still at that point have not given her a year. This should be easy. It's easy. I want to make my life happy. I'm going to do this. So let's 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 think about it. In Second Samuel chapter twelve. God sent the prophet Nathan. Y'all know about this, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the, here's the story. I want to say it again just to make sure y'all hear it. This is not on here because I couldn't fit it on it. And um, uh, Nathan told him a story because he used a parable to get him to understand it because this is the way that, that he felt it was best to communicate. Today, mm -hmm. you're a king. I can't just come in here and charge you with anything even though I'm the prophet. So I'm going to find a way to talk to you. Mm -hmm. He said there was a rich man. He had a bunch of uh, sheep. And there was a poor man who had nothing except for one sheep. The rich man had a thousand sheep, okay? The rich man had somebody come into his house to spend the night. He had him over for dinner. The, the rich man said, don't use any of my sheep. Go take that one sheep from that one guy. Use his, kill his, and take his. So the, the, the prophet Nathan asked David, what should happen? What should happen to the rich man who did something like that? David said, kill him! He ought to be murdered to death. What kind of person is that? Why would you do that? The man only got one sheep. You got a thousand sheep and you want to take his? That's wicked. That's evil. And then Nathan said, you're the man. It's you. I'm talking about you. This story is you. What is he talking about? Because David had wives. Didn't he? he had multiple wives. Mm -hmm. And he took the man's wife. Yeah. The man got one wife. You got a whole bunch of wives. You're the king. You took his one wife. You're the man. And that's when you read Psalms what? Which Psalms did David wrote? Psalm 91, I think it was, when he said, uh, when he, David pretty much oh, repented. Oh, when he repented, yes. Purge me with hiss of God. Yeah. We read that because David, oh, shoot, I messed up. Why didn't David see that before? Why didn't he see his fault before? Why did it take a man of God to show him that you're wrong? He was blinded by everything that's going on and he mm -hmm. couldn't see it until a man of God, the word of God. That's why you need the word of God in your marriage. That's why you got to have it every day. That's why you got to read the Bible together. That's why you got to worship together in your own house. You need God in your marriage because there's times where it's possible that the man can be doing something to you and don't even realize that he's hurting you. You might not even realize. Are you hurting your wife? Have you ever asked her, are you destroying her spirit? Are you causing her pain? Are you causing her grief? Do you know? God is sending a man of God to tell you it's very possible that you're hurting your wife. You are the man. You. You did it. So I need you to look in the mirror at yourself and realize there's some things I need to adjust. There's some things I need to change. I don't want to be the person that hurt my wife. I want to be the person that makes her happy and cheer her up for you. I want her to be the person that says, my whole bucket list, my husband just worked it all out. I don't want to be the person that causes trauma and pain. So even if she leaves me and she moves on in her life, her pain and her trauma and her bad memories and all the stuff she has to get over is me. I don't want you to have to get over me. I want your time with me to be great. I want your time with me to be the nicest time of your life. I want you to be happy. David, why did you do that? Why did you take the man, that, that, that Uriah, he was, he, David called him back. He devised a whole plan. And the man says, no, I'm going to stay here and protect you. Was that Uriah's fault? I think I'm going to charge Uriah because Uriah should have went home to his wife. The king told you to go home to your wife. You should have went home to your wife. Now, that would have been a whole nother problem. So maybe I'm wrong again. Because if he went home to his wife, then the baby would have been blamed on him. <laughs> this is a conundrum. This is a problem all caused by David. You did all of that because you wanted to be happy for a few minutes. What is wrong with you? And it takes a man of God to come and tell you. Otherwise, you're going to continue your anger and your wrath, and you're going to continue killing people. He, David said, put him in the front of the line, and then we're going to abandon him. Can you imagine the riot like, what the heck is going on? 
Why would you do that to me? And you took his wife. And you got pregnant. What, the, what, what kind of person is that? And, you, and yes, you need the man of God to come and talk to you. That's why, wives, you need your man in church. You need him listening to the word of God. You need him singing and clapping. If you're marrying a man that does what go to church, what kind of man is David? What kind of person is he that would do something like that? What kind of man are you? That's what I'm really going to talk about. Let's just get out there. What kind of man are you? What kind of woman are you? Are you full of rage? Are you full of lust? Are you a brawler? Are you an attention grabber? Are you a bully? Are you one dimensional? What would Jesus say you are? What would Nathan come and say you are? What would he charge you with? What story would he come up with to say you are the man? Are you the type of man that your wife don't really want? Do you want, don't answer this question, ladies. Do you want a man full of rage? Don't answer. What does Mark 4, 41 says? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this that the wind and the sea obey? And remember Jesus was on the boat? They, 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 the first thing they came, what kind of dude is this? That's what I'm asking. What kind of dude are you? Are you a dude that will do anything to make your wife happy? Are you the type of dude that will repent to your wife? Are you the type of dude that will, uh, that doesn't have a problem saying, oh, I hurt you. I'm sorry. Are you that kind of guy? Are you the kind of guy that realizes, you yeah, messed up, okay, okay, okay. We've been married for however long. And all of these years, I've been doing stuff wrong. I remember me personally, my wife gave me one word and said, you are that. That's the type of man you are. You are that man. And I immediately changed. Because I'm that kind of guy. I stopped completely cold turkey and I went overboard to make sure she knows I will never be that person what kind of man are you? What kind of woman are you? Hmm? So you have to, you have to pick your pain. You have to ignore it, or you have to make a deal with it. That's what we're gonna do today. You have to deal with your pain because you can't put yourself in a situation, wives, that contains the same pain by marrying somebody who gives you the same pain. So you have to pick what you're gonna do. And I want the men to do this first. I want you men to do this first. Pick your pain. You have pain in your past. You have things that happened to you. You probably got bullied. Don't want to tell anybody. You probably lost a fight. Don't want to talk about it. And it's probably, and, and, and I don't know if a woman can understand it. If you watch UFC, you see these guys lose a fight. You see what happens. They get crying tears and they're all messed up. Now imagine if that happened to somebody multiple times as a child. This is the nature of a man. We can't lose a fight. We can't let that happen. What a man. If whatever happened, let's say we were bullied all, all our life. We have to deal with that pain or we're going to use that pain and it's going to hurt somebody. Whatever it is that happened to you, broken family, broken home, mama left you, daddy don't want you, whatever it is, that pain is going to hurt somebody. So you either have to deal with it, you can try to just ignore it. That might work if you just ignore it, but it's going to have a manifestation somehow that you don't even realize. Or you can make a deal with it. I'm not going to let that control me. I'm not going to let it rule me. I'm not going to let it take over my life. I'm not going to let it rule my life. Whatever happened to me, especially before my wife, if you had, let's say you were in a relationship and you got cheated on, I'm not going to keep charging you where you're at. I don't want to see your pay, your text. I don't want to see your phone. I, I'm not going to do that because of what happened to you before. So I'm going to make a deal. I need y'all to do that right now. Make a deal with it, whatever it is that you're bringing into this from a previous relationship, from childhood, whatever it is, make a deal with it. And the deal is, I'm not going to let this bother or my wife. I'm going to protect it. You bring in wrath, you bring in anger, you, you need to win because you lost every time in your life. You lost every fight or you, you played sports and you lost on every every game you played. You're a last pick. Nobody ever picked you. You're going to bring that over now. Now you have to win everything you every game you play. You have to win every argument. You want to do that or you want to make a deal with it? I'm going to treat you better. I'm going to give you a better life. So that, that's your point. That's your, your, your goal is to make sure you either deal with it, ignore it, are you the man that your woman wants? I asked that before. How do you know that? You make that decision? You decide on your own? Like, yeah, she, that's what. And how do you know that? Because one thing you can't be, you can't be the man that she don't want. You can't be the man that she don't like. You can't be the type of man that she don't like because it will never work. There are some things that your woman wants and you should know this already. You should be an expert at what she wants. So, I'm going to tell you some of the things that your woman wants. 
Let's let's open the packet that I just gave you. The packet that I told you don't open. Not the ones, not the ones that you have from before, the packet that I just gave you. You should see some things in there that a woman wants. A woman wants a man that's delicate, no? No. A woman wants a man that's soft spoken. Okay, a delicate you didn't say what was underneath it. What's underneath it? Handle with care, like to be sensitive. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's what that's okay. a, like yes. compassion. I probably yeah. should use a different word. You mean like okay. compassionate? Yeah, compassionate. Yeah. That's what Okay, yes, me, I'm, in my mind, I'm, a woman wants a man that's delicate with them. That's what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yes. All right. A woman wants a man that's soft spoken. I heard some snaps. Uh -huh. a, a woman wants a man that's secure. A woman wants strength, but only for protection. They want you to be strong so that you can protect them. Not only for that, but definitely. Like, we do, you, yes, you want to secure man. Yeah. Strong man. Okay. A woman wants stability. Don't you yeah. want things? Yes. <laughs> a woman wants a man that's stable, not yeah. running here or there, moving here or there. Right. Can't figure out this job, that job. This car, get it. I'm just painting the house, blue painting red. Can't stop. A woman wants stable. Yeah, like. That's more like number one. Yes. All right. A woman stuff. wants a man that's romantic. Yeah. Yes. yes. We can dance tonight. I'm going to get you a flower. I'm going to put rose petals. On the floor, you can go to the to the place and ask them just for the rose petals. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna set your bath water, and I'm gonna put smell good stuff in there. I'm gonna do little things like that. You know, when you get in your car, I'm gonna leave a note in there. You know, I'm gonna do little romantic things. That's women want that, right? Yep. A woman wants a man that's holy. Man. A woman wants safety from you. Yes. yes. A woman wants safety from her husband. This is a little different than safety. And secure and strength for protection. She wants safety from you. She don't want to be hurt by you. She don't want you to hurt her. A woman wants a man that will never put his hands on her. A woman wants a man that will never act like he's going to put his hands on her. A woman wants a man that will never raise his voice. Because that means I'm unsafe. Because you're scaring me. Okay? Now, what does a man want? What you got? Come on, she wants, it's not in order, but God help me. Uh, this is what a man wants. A man, this is a lot, <laughs> a man, this is a lot smaller. A man wants sensual. Sensual means I have, how many senses do we have? Six or seven? We have five senses? Or a woman, a, a, a man wants a woman to appeal to all of those senses. He doesn't want to come home. You got rollers in your hair. And, um, and you, you, you come in bed and you got a mud mask on and scared. He, he wants you to keep yourself now, I'll pay for that. Whatever amount of money it takes for you to go do what you got to do and pamper yourself and get your nails done, get the rust off of your heel. Yes, that's what we want. True or false? Yeah. All right. A man wants a woman that's accountable. Yeah. We know where you are. You, 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 you're not just running off and not coming home and all that kind of stuff. True or false? Mm -hmm. True. All right. A man wants a woman that's loyal. Yes. Oh, God, yes. That should be number one. A man... Wants a woman as modest. You think he wants you to be walking around with your boobies all hanging out, yeah. with your titty crack showing. You think that's what he wants, <laughs> but the man doesn't want all of your backside out your backside. Mm -hmm. The man wants a modest woman that knows how to put on a nice dress and a nice blouse and look good. That's what a man wants. True or false? True. A man wants a, a multiple issue or one issued woman where I can deal with one issue at a time. No nag. I don't want to hear every blasted thing I, I, one thing at a time. We want that one issue at a time. True or false? True. And we want support. We want to lay our head in your bosom. We want that support. We want that comfort. How did how did Delilah defeat Samson? How did she defeat Samson? The strongest him. man in the world. How did she get him? His strength. Stop. How did she get his strength? Talking. Put her head in his lap. How did she? Yes, he was laying in her bosom. She knows what that man needs. This is the strongest man in the world, the most powerful man in the world, and she knows this dude just wants to come. Mm -hmm. He just wants to be out. That's all right. So here's what I want to do with those. You're going to, I know that she has more. We're going to do this on another time. But you're going to take three things that's the most important for you, and you're going to trade them for the three things that's most important to you. Three. You're going to take three, and you're going to give her those three things that's the most important whatever they are, and as you're giving them, as you're handing them to her, I want you to say this. I want you to say this. 
I'm giving you these cards, but I'm giving you these things. I'm offering you these things, whatever it is. If you want me to be a uh, uh, protector from yourself, when you hand her that card, you're saying to her, I'm never going to yell at you. I'm never going to hit you. When you get, when she gives you one that says loyal, I'm never going to cheat on you. I'm never going to be in another man's face. I'm never going to do anything that makes you feel like uncomfortable. Those three things you talk about later on, what that means to you. We don't have enough time to detail what that means. No, because there's a lot in here. You got to pick three. I know. We got to be decisive. We got to get three. Hold on now. We're women. <laughs> let's, let's get those three things. That's important. The most important three things. And remember, you, you, you got to just grab three and then if those three works. All right. So let's put that down. Let's trade them. You can do your three. You get your three. Okay. Now, what does it do from you? Safety from you means that I want to be safe when you are around. Just like I want to be safe from the crook and the killer, I want to be safe from you. I don't want you to yell at me, and I don't want you to hit me, and I don't want you to scare me, and I don't want you to be a brawler. Can you do that? Yes, got it. Okay, no, you keep it. You keep it. What's the next one? Romantic. Can you be a different, whatever whatever it was, the, everything that's on these cards, Look at me, everything that's on these cards means I'm going to do it differently now. So if I used to bring you uh, flowers, I'm going to upgrade and get you some, some roses now. That means we're going to do something different. Can you change your romantic? Can you change the frequency of romantic? You know, we used to have date night on Fridays. Now we're going to do it Fridays and Tuesdays. Can you adjust your romantic, your level of romantic? Can you do that? Yep. What is next? Holy. Can you get the Holy Ghost? Can you tarry for the Holy Ghost? Can you get more into the word? Can you worship with your wife? Can you get a Bible and read it together? Can you come here on Friday nights at 7 p.m.? Or come to customer service that night? This is a shameless plug. All right, what about you? What you got? One issue at a time. One. Can you give, whenever you're having a conversation, whenever you're having an issue, can you stick with just that issue? And that's it. We're not talking about the shoes last night or whatever. We not the, If we're talking about the socks on the counter, that's all we're going to talk about. Do that. Got it. What's next? Stop spoken. Keep calm. Can you be soft spoken? Can you make sure that your voice is at a decibel that will never be appearance to be screaming, yelling, nagging? Can you give me those soft words, those nice words? Mm -hmm. All right. What's next? Supporting. Can you give him that comfort that he doesn't even know he needs? Mm -hmm. Can we come back? Supportive or comfort? You're right. I think supportive would be a little bit more of, okay, the guy is going for a new position, right? Something like that. Yeah. What is what is supportive? Supportive would be more so, and let's say, do. yeah, let's say he has a goal in life that he set and he needs his wife to help support him reach the goal. But supportive means that there's something that he has that he wants help to get toward. Yeah, I don't so know that what means he, wants he to do. Watch that the means he would the, uh, if he's asking for support, that means there's something that he that he's working on working God gave on. him. He's, he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's trying to get the Holy Ghost. And then we're gonna talk about since we talk about what women want, when do we ever get to talk about what God wants? Because remember God needs to be all Man. wrapped up, tied up and messed up into our relationship. Mm -hmm. We need him all in it. We want his word, we want everything he got. What does he want? I'm gonna tell you what he wants. God wants a man to be a provider, a teacher, and a proven leader. Because the Bible says, but if any provide not for his own, his own what? His own wife, his own kids. If a man doesn't provide for his own kids, especially for those that live in his house, in case you thought I was wrong, he has denied the faith. Mm. That's how important it is. You're not even saying You don't support your family? You're not saying You don't take care of your kids? You're not saying And it's worse than an infidel. That's what God wants. Why are we already worried about what the woman wants? man wants. Why would not have to worry about what God wants? And if they will learn anything, the Bible says, let them ask their husbands at home. So if a woman is going to learn the word of God, the Bible requires the woman of God, the woman to learn from her man at home. That man should be teaching the word of God at home. That man can't teach the word of God if he don't know. You need a man that knows the word of God. You need a man that if he doesn't know the word of God, he knows somebody that knows the word of God. Hey, we're going to watch this guy tonight. Hey, we're going to turn into covenantservants.com tonight. 
And we're gonna we're gonna learn the word of God. And we, I'm going to teach you that. Why would you want a man that doesn't want the word of God? This is the Bible. The Bible tells you. We we skip over to it's a shame to a woman speak in church. We don't want we want to deal with that. That's good stuff. But we don't want to deal with the man being a teacher. God also wants in Mark ten verse seven. He said, "For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and do what? Mm-hmm. Cleave to his wife. Get your mom out the front seat of the car." Okay? Your wife comes first. Okay? No woman wants a mama's boy. Your wife comes first. Your mama does not come first. If your wife is on, on the train, if your wife is on the train tracks, Man. with your mother? <laughs> if your wife is on the train tracks and your mama's in the middle of the expressway, you gotta go and tell your wife. If your wife is hungry and your mama is hungry and you only got enough gas to get to one, you gotta go for your wife. If your mom and if your, your father wife. is in in trouble and you need him, there's such to that. Your wife comes first. If your wife or your, if your mother is in the house, it's on fire. You gotta save your wife. If that's you can only save one person, the Bible requires you to save your wife. The Bible says in Colossians three eighteen, wife, submit yourselves unto your own husband. We love that. Yes, submit to me only. You don't have no business doing anything another man tells you to do. Your job is. Me, I'm your responsibility. You're my responsibility. We like that part. We deal with that part. But what about that last part? What's the part on the bottom say? As it is fit in the Lord. Didn't I say we need the word of God? You don't have to listen to the husband tell you sit down and shut up. I've heard a husband say that that's what he could do. Sit down and shut up. No, we're not wearing that. Don't that as it fits in the Lord. What is the scripture that goes with the instruction that your husband is giving? You better back it up with the word. Or you don't have to do it. Get mad if you want. You, your husband is not your boss. He is not your your God. You are supposed to submit to the Holy Ghost that's inside of him. That's how that's supposed to work. So when I come and I tell my wife, we got to pray this month. All month. That's what you have to obey. We're fasting all this last week of, of January. Sorry. Sorry to tell you. We're fasting the whole week. All week. You have to obey that. Because that's fit with the Lord. You're not wearing that jacket. Is it modest? If it's modest, then she can wear whatever she wants. Because I don't have a scripture. The scripture requires you to dress modest. So that's all I can tell you. I'm not your ruler. I'm not your boss. We're leaving now. Okay. It's time to go. Okay. If there's danger, I see somebody standing over there. That's what we're doing. Okay. But you have your family's house and you get upset because you don't like something. Somebody say, no, we're leaving. Let's go. That's not the Bible. As it literally says, as it is fit. What does that mean then? What does it mean? Tell me, what does it mean as it fit in the Lord? As if we, that part doesn't exist. We're just going to ignore that part. Simply, why submit yourself? I've heard preachers preach that all the time and stop right there. Why do you stop there? Why do you stop there? The wife is not your child. She's not your, your slave. This, this is not what God wants you to treat that woman like that. Okay, Colossians 3.19. Husbands, love your wives. And all the women say amen. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> And the man have no problem with that. The men are cool with that. Yeah, I love my wife. But watch this. And be not bitter. You cannot be bitter to your wife. You just can't. And how are you going to get the Holy Ghost being bitter to your wife? How are you going to get the Holy Ghost doing anything the Bible says not to do? Because in order to get the Holy Ghost, you have to accept this whole book. That's what the Holy Ghost means. The Bible says he'll put his word in your mind and in your spirit. When you accept God, I'll do anything that's in this book. I don't care what it is. Whatever it tells me I can't wear, I won't wear it. Whatever it says I won't do, I don't eat. Whatever it says, God, I want to please you. I want to make you happy, God. I'll do whatever you say, especially concerning my wife. I want to, I got to live with her. So, yes, if the Bible says don't be bitter against her, you won't hear me talking bitter. You won't hear me talking like that. I'm going to use soft answer. Am I helping? Does it help? Yeah. That helps. If, if, if he only talked to you softly, that would be wonderful, wouldn't it? If he never said anything bitter, wouldn't that be nice? That would be great. Look at that smile. Yes, because it's and always constructive criticism. You don't always, even if you want to say something to your spouse, you don't have to say it in a negative way. That's constructive. Criticism. That's the Bible. And listen, we want we talk about the woman wants. Y'all got in your hand what she wants. We're gonna talk about what God wants now. Next, what does God want? He wants the Bible says her children arise up and call her blessed. Mom, you blessed. Mm. You, you're blessed. Look at you. You're blessed. But we stop there. 
Her husband does too. Mm. When last time your husband called you blessed, don't answer. Listen to this. And he praiseth her. Rise up. How often do kids rise up? Okay. How often does should that man be praising you? I didn't write a single word in the Bible. And you know, people get mad at me. I just read the scripture. That's all you tell You said it. You told me what that means. Okay. That husband doesn't have time to be better because he's telling you how beautiful you are and how much I appreciate you getting up this morning. He don't have time to be better because he has to praise you. He has to do it. <laughs> and he got to teach the kids to do it too. You can't talk to your mommy and Academy. You got to praise her. You got to call her blessed. And you guess what? How does she get blessed? You got to bless her. That dress you got on is nice. That outfit is nice. Because I bought it. You're blessed. <laughs> so I got to buy you more things to make sure you're blessed. You see how that works? You want to be married? Do you really want to be married? Do you know what marriage is? Marriage is ministry. This is not hard work. But you can do this. So I went and I looked up the sociologist of the University of Pittsburgh. And I looked up some uh, information from the uh, sociologist of Iowa. I looked at some of the studies they had over, I don't remember, a 10-year period or whatever. They conducted a study about the things that women want in a man, and they haven't changed <laughs> since I think the study started in 2008. All right, so husbands, I need husbands to pay attention. I need you to give yourself 10 points if you meet each of these triggers. A woman wants a financial future, a retirement plan with funds for kids. Yes. If that's you, if you got that, you get a check. Okay? You check him? Yeah, you, you, just any paper you got anywhere. Just write down a check. I want to see how many checks you so get. So you have to have that. Hmm? You saying he has to have that? This is what women want. So do you have a financial future for your wife? They're asking, asking, right? right? I'm asking, yeah, do you have a financial future for your wife? Do you have a retirement plan that we can look at? Do you, do you have your four hundred one k? Can I see it? Can yes. I see your your pension? Can I can I see your retirement plan? Can I see? Because the Bible says. A good man or a righteous man, I don't remember which one, it says leaves an inheritance for his children's yes. children. You have to have money set for your grandkids. You have to have a well built. or You have to have something set up for your kids' kids. And if you have something set up for way down there, then you got to have something set up for your wife. Right. All right. A woman wants, and this has not changed. This is across the United States. This study shows that the, the woman wants good health in that man. Yep. Do you have good health? Are you healthy? Or does she have to take care of your sick behind? Because you eating pizzas all night and drinking three liters all night, and now you got diabetes and you're about to get your foot cut off, and now I got to take off work to go deal with you at the hospital because you you just 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 an unhealthy piece of garbage, and you're getting on my nerves because you can't stop stuffing your face with junk and filth. Okay, okay. And that poor woman got to deal with that. Do you have good health? If you don't, and you don't give yourself a check for it, then this is just. Something to work on. You got 2023 coming? I'm going to be healthy. In 2023, I'm going to be healthy. Write down the pencil down. If y'all cold, you can turn heat up. All right. Is Are you ambitious and industrious? Because a woman likes to... If if, if, I, if you send your husband outside to go chop some wood to make a fire, <laughs> do you know where you got, you know what she's going to be? Right in the window. Looking. Oh, look at that. Look at him going right there. She, going, she can't resist it. <laughs> You know why? Cause she like it. She like when you when you moving that furniture and you. I'm just pick the whole thing up. Are you ambitious? Are you able? If we if we low on ends, do you have a plan already? I'm just gonna drive for Uber. I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna make this money. You got to worry about it. I got you. If I get sick, if I get pregnant, if I have to stay home, whatever it is, I got you. Are you ambitious enough to make sure things work and things run smoothly? Are you industrious with your hands? Can you fix things? Can you do things? Can you help out? If something breaks, do I have to take it to the repair man? You can't sew. Can, I can sew a button. I can. I can. I can patch up. I have my clothes. Yeah, I iron her clothes for her. All that. Yes, buy her clothes, iron it, hammer it up, patch up. All that. I, I can do that. I right. Husbands. <laughs> the, they want the husbands to have earning power, but they don't want husbands to have soul to provide her. We want to be able to work, but we want their ability to work. But they want you to have earning power. They want you to have the skills and the ability to go and make money so that I can know that when this guy at this job, if he gets on my nerves one more time, if he hits on me one more time, if he says something I don't like one more time, I know my husband got me. I can walk off from here. I can go to school and start over and do something a little different. But I can't 
because you don't have the ambition and you don't have the earning power that I need. So I'm stuck in this dead end job because I married somebody who don't got my back like that. All right, number five. And this I'm going backwards, so this is okay. all right. Must have a pleasing disposition, look pleasant, with no mood swings, and dress nice and have nice hygiene. I don't know why that that's one has so loaded, but I think it's all. I think, no, I think it's relevant. So yeah. having a pleasing disposition. So when I see you, do I, do I have to? You look so mean all the time. You look mad and angry. Are you going to hit me today, or, or what, what? Why you look like that? When I see you, do you look? Do you look pleasant? Did you change when you come into the room? I've caught my wife many times when she pulled up into the driveway. I caught her many times. Put the mirror on. She picks my hair. She gets herself together before she comes in the house. Mm-hmm. She's about to be up. No, she's not going to come in the house with blood mask on and rollers in her hand. So the same thing. Mm-hmm. Women want that man to know how to put a suit on if you have to. To match and look decent. So when I'm talking to my girl, that's my husband right there. Look at him. Or like, oh God. Yeah, that, 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 that. <laughs> that's him. He can't hold a conversation. Oh, so I'm gonna leave him over there because we're talking about stuff that he just don't like. He doesn't know how to engage in a conversation. Mm-hmm. Or he'll try to take over the conversation because he's so controlling. So I uh, think we want a man that we can take. The next one is, did you did you do that one mm-hmm. That's fine. Okay, the next one is they want a man who has who wants friends and family to like you. So the the wife wants their friends and their family to like you, and they want mutual friends. So a woman don't want a guy she can't take anywhere with her. He ain't gonna act right. He ain't gonna act right. You you can't trust him, you know, act stupid, get into a fight, get into a wrong, (laughs) start drinking and all that. All right, number seven hasn't changed since 1977. They want a man that's educated, and has intelligence. We can hold a conversation. You can teach me something, and you can teach me without being condescending. Right? Women want to learn. They want to learn how to play Apex Legends, but I don't want to learn from you because you don't have patience. Because you're going to, don't you know this, that? No, I, I want somebody to be able to explain something to me with a nice, soft voice, take their time, make sure I understand, and don't treat me like, how come you don't know that? No, I should be able to take you outside and show you how to change brakes. Even if you don't do it, I should be able to do that and you feel comfortable knowing, okay, I got it. I know how to do it even if I don't do it. Right. And I don't want to, you don't know how to do that? No, don't use a 10 millimeter, 12 meter. No, you don't even know what a meter is. All right. So we want, they want you to be a tr- have an attractive conversation. Keyword, attractive conversation. All you, that's all you talk about is wrestling. That's all you talk about is just a <laughs> TikTok video. You got nothing else going on? That, that's the same one. I'm sorry. That's the same one. Okay. I want you to talk to me about something. I want to be like, ooh, yeah, God gave you some revelation. Or, yeah, I'm working right now. I'm into healthy stuff or whatever. And you got some insight on that. You know that this bird works with this one. And you, that's that's an attractive conversation. Well, I want to stay up all night till when we first met, we stayed up all night in the bed till two, three o'clock and we're just talking. It's just so attractive listening to what you say. All right, number eight. Emotional stability. That means I'm going to always come home to happiness. I don't have to get ready to open the door and get butterflies in my stuff. What I got to deal with now? <sighs> when I text him, he's going to take it the wrong way. If we go out, I want st- I want stability to know that you're not going to just switch up on me. Or if I see my friend that you don't like or a family member that you don't like or deal with, I, I, do I have to be surprised? I want to be stable. If you're happy, you're gonna stay happy. You're gonna give me that. You're gonna give me that stability. If you got, if you got that one, check that one off. If not, you need to work on it. This one, I don't know where this one goes. It says that they want husbands to be vulnerable. They want husbands to be able to talk to them and tell them about their feelings. Oh, they want tell husbands them how to they, open up. Yeah. Right. I don't know because they think they can fix them or what. I don't know about that. And nine is trustworthy. They want you to be trustworthy. Right? I think vulnerability goes with trustworthy. <laughs> okay, that's probably where it goes because it's right above it. Yeah. And they want a man that can express their love. Yes. What do you mean? Everybody got their love language. Oh, love language? And be able to say it. I want to be able to tell you, I love you. Not just those words, but here's how I love you. I love all these things about you. I like this about you. I love you because of this or that. And here's how I'm going to show you that I love you. I'm going to show you that I love you because I'm going to... And it's the little things. What do we like little things? I'll make my wife coffee, and then I went and bought the Gurdelli chocolate and just drop it in there. 
Hot chocolate tastes just a little, I mean, the coffee tastes just a little bit better now. That's how I show you I love you. And one day we're going to have to have a conversation about I love you. All right. Yama. Did we do the train already? No, we didn't do the train yet. They got, you, they're going to do the train, right? Huh? A woman wants a man that's open to change. Yes. Okay. I'm not really sure how we're going to do this. I don't know how we're going to do it. But you should have three things. If you have it on three on one paper, that's fine. If you don't, hold it, hold it, hold it. Yeah, here's so here's the key. Look at me. We did this already. We just did it before, so this should be easy. Here's what I want. I want you, after listening to everything I said, if I wasted my time, that's fine. If you're going to try to make your marriage work, if you're going to try to do some things to make your marriage a little bit better, then I want you to blindly, you're going to have to blindly trust your wife. Your wife is about, to, your wife, your husband is about to give you three things that they want from you. This is different than a bucket list. I want these three things. I want you to blindly say yes. Oh, I'm gonna get whatever, whatever you put, because I'm a man and I love you. Whatever you put, uh -huh. I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna change immediately. I'm gonna give you whatever it is. This is gonna be hard. It's gonna be tough. I know, I know, because I know you're creative. I know it took y'all a long time to write this stuff down, but I am going to say yes to everything you got. All right. Y'all ready? <laughs> Did you respond to him? Did you tell him you're going to give you a... Tell him what? You have yes. to blindly say yes. Blindly? Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Did you say yes? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Get, I don't know what you're talking put about. It in her, don't give it to her, but just put it in her hand. You put yours in your hand like that. We're going to trade it at the same time. Oh. Y'all remember what I said about the devil in marriage? Yeah. He hates it. He hates it. He hates your marriage. He hates you. <laughs> he hated you saying, I'll take care of this woman. This is why I will never marry anybody without the traditional vows. You can write your words that you want to say, it ain't vows. I, the vows are important, because the vows include a lot of stuff that they're trying to get rid of these days. The vows include, I'm never going to have sex with anybody else. They don't want that in there. The vows include, even if you get sick, I'm going to take care of you. Mentally sick, emotionally sick. If you have problems mentally, physically, I'm going to take care of you. That's what these vows are, and the devil hates those vows. And he's going to try everything that you said. He's going to try to trip you up. He's going to try to mess you up. You know how many men have been taken down by women? <laughs> you know how many preachers have been taken down? They're always tricking the book. He does the same thing over and over. Because you're too stupid to set yourself up so that you keep your vow. Keep women out your face. A woman, a woman comes to me and I'm like, no, no, stop. No, you see the ring? No, no. Because what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm, I'm pr protecting my wife from you, you scallywag. You want to destroy her. You want to hurt her emotions. You want to destroy her feelings. And you want her to be like you. Hurt and bitter, and out there trying to steal somebody else's man. And I'm not going to let because I'm going to protect my wife from the wolf, I'm going to protect her from the bear, I'm going to protect her from the robber, and I'm going to protect her from you, hussy. Hussy. <laughs> and all, all the women said, amen. amen. And you need a man that's going to protect you from himself because I can destroy you with my own actions. Yeah. I'm going to feel good for a few minutes, and now my whole family is destructive. What do you mean you want to feel good for a that's why I'm going to cheat. The no. purpose of me cheating is for those few minutes that I want to feel there. It's all about me. I'm selfish. I want to feel good for a few minutes, so I'm going to destroy everything I got and destroy my kids and destroy my wife's the, the emotions and her ego. Remember, the devil, will use, that's what he will use. He's going to use the same thing. So I have to set up safeguard. I don't let women in my face at all. Cut it off immediately. All right. That's why the devil hates. The devil hates me because he, he's trying to find ways in. He can find ways in my mind, but the little easy, stupid stuff, you got to protect yourself from that, protect your family from that, because he hates marriage. He hates your vows. He can't stand you saying that stuff. Do you know this? Here's the revelation. All of my messages, I give a revelation. Uh, did you catch this? The devil never said one word to Adam. Show me in the Bible what Adam had to contend with the devil. Show me in the Bible what Adam said anything to the devil. Show me in the Bible, the devil said anything to Adam. But I can show you where Adam should have protected his wife. I can show you exactly where he should have covered her. I can show you exactly what Adam should have done to protect his wife from that devil, from that spirit. And that's what the man's job is supposed to be. That Adam was supposed to protect her from that spirit. Adam should have blocked whatever emotions or whatever bad feelings. Adam should have been there to stop it. 
The issues in your marriage, the issues in your marriage are directly from Satan. And they come from everybody that obeys his voice. He has imps. He has demons. He does things that obey his voice. That's what your problem is. I've been saying that all night. That's what you have to do. You have to protect your wife. You have to protect her feelings. You have to guard her emotions. You have to cover her in prayer. You can't let the enemy get to her. And you don't you can't let the devil use you to destroy her. Whether it's with that hussy, whether it's with your anger. Whether it's with your lust, whether it's with your rage, whether your rage, or whether it's with your past or your own demons, you have to protect your wife from you. Because marriage is not complicated. No, it's not. If you follow the rules, if you use these hacks, if you use the Bible, what does Ephesians 4 and 3 1 say? Here we go again. Here comes this word again. Why are we coming across this word? We need to pray about this word. The Bible says, Ephesians 4 31 says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor. What does clamor mean? Clamor means yelling and, 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 and talking loud and that type of thing. And evil speaking. The Bible says let it be put away from you. And the Bible also talks about malice, malicious. I'm going to use words to hurt you. I'm going to talk about you. I'm going to, if you, you, get, about you had a baby and you gained a little weight, I'm going to call you fat. Or I'm, I'm going to say you're worthless or you're good for nothing. The Bible says don't do it. That all bitterness and all malicious words and all malicious things be put away from you. And listen to verse 32. What does verse 32 say? Be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, Christ's sake, have forgiven you. Why is that so hard? Why do we even have to talk about it? Why does the, the Bible know that there's to be some good for nothing, low down, worthless men that he has to put a scripture to tell you to be kind? Because a man is not going to be kind of his own. Right. So I have to tell you to be kind. Mm -hmm. I have to command you to not use bitterness. I have to command you not to have wrath. I have to command you not to be angry or to evil speak. How do you know the devil? How, how does a man know that the devil isn't currently using you to destroy her? That's why we got to put up boundaries today. So I have, a, I have an assignment. So we know that the devil is here for one reason and one purpose, to destroy marriage. And he has to destroy you, destroy your emotions. However you do it, he wants to destroy you. So what we're going to do is we're going to put up boundaries to make sure that doesn't happen. For example, I will never counsel a woman by herself. If a woman wants to text me, she has to include either her husband in the text or she has to include my wife. That's just boundaries. No problems, no issues. You ain't sending me no text messages in the middle of the night. And, and nobody calling me and saying, hey, nope, my wife's on the message. Your husband's on the message. We're good. So boundaries has to be set up to make sure there's no, the Bible says don't give no place to the devil. Don't let him have any area in here. I'm going to fill it up with the word of God. So today what we're going to do is we're going to, since we have to protect. Uh, this woman here, I looked up a battered woman. Yeah. That's what this video is. This is a woman who's just tired of being hurt. Okay? What we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the devil's not using you to hurt her. We're going to make sure that the devil's not using you to hurt your wife. Because it is possible that you'll be just like David and didn't know that it's you. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some safe words with rules. We have one already. Don't say it out loud. We have a safe word. The safe word works. I guess we we'll just do a demonstration. So here's the word. The safe word is, and you can make your own rules for it. When she says that safe word, I'm going to show you what I have to do. Come on, just whisper it in my ear. I don't want to know the word. What? That's not the same word. Yes, he changed it. <laughs> he changed it like a He changed it because okay, he didn't like the first word. Because he said it was. So this is what that word. This is what I have. To do. <clears throat> it's not about really. Sitting it's back. not about submissiveness. That's just no. what works for us. I told her we had a conversation, and I told her, "Okay, I'll be on." The, the goal is for me to be under you. So if we're both standing, I'm taller than you, and it looks like I'm aggressive. So if I if you're if if you if you're standing, then I'll sit down in the chair. If you're already sitting down, I'll sit down on the floor so that I'm always under you, so you don't feel fearful. That's good, All right? What else? I'm yelling, I'm screaming, but she said the word. Mm -hmm. The rules are: I can't say anything else until she lets me know she's done talking and she's ready to listen to me now. So what's your safe word for her? It's the same word. So if she's going and insane and crazy and yelling and screaming and breaking out, she would never do that.
But if she was, I can say the safe word. And she has to stop. She doesn't have to get down on the floor below me. She doesn't have to stop what she's doing. She has to stop talking. She has to sit down and listen to me. And when I'm done talking, whatever I got, whatever I want to say, now it's to be a turn. And now listen. So I want you guys to make a safe word. Together. Work together. So she claims we changed the safe word, but the safe word was for Melda. You told me you Because I like wanted it. a word. I wanted a ridiculous word that even if I'm mad, why would you say it? Okay. It can't be a word that, you know, it has to be a weird word where I know and don't care because the devil can make it. I've been raged before. I've had that before. It takes something to jar my attention to say, okay. I got it. I'm going to. I didn't even realize, David. You the man, you gone too far. I know. Right. Don't tell me. Y'all work on it together. Or you can get it later on. And in addition to the safe word, so for me, I said I have to, it's a it's a series of things I have to do. If I'm driving and I'm mad and I'm erratic, that doesn't necessarily mean I have to pull over to the side of the road. It just means I have to turn the radio off, shut up. So whatever that means, I don't know if you guys have time to do that now, but whatever that is, you guys can work on that together. Whatever that safe word means, I want you to agree that you would give her that. Mm-hmm. If it means, if you, that, okay, but it's a series of things. I want the list. I want you to have a list. That means you okay. shut up, mm-hmm. stop doing what you're doing, you're look me in my eyes and give me my attention. That means you can't. Whatever you were doing, you stop doing. I need your attention, and you can't abuse this word either. Because it just simply won't work. This word has to be. Uh, this is a this is a safe gap measure. This is when we've gone to the zenith, and we're at the pinnacle, and we can't come back. We need to stop right now before we go too far. Every marriage that has ended in a divorce ended because somebody went too far. They didn't stop. We. I have a pastor. He said that their biggest fight was over toothpaste because his wife squeezed the toothpaste from the middle. They had the biggest fight ever because of that. Somebody should have a safe word and say, "We need to stop." And just really thought, "Look what we fight over." That's all it took. This safe word would have saved it. Now, oh, just stop. Just stop. Just stop. Right now, we're going too far in the city. So whatever it is, whatever it is, you have to, I, I'm sure you can work on it a little bit later. Yeah. But whatever it is, agree that you would give her that. Yeah. Got it. Because your wife, your wife is not a dirty rag. She isn't a piece of garbage. She is a chosen vessel sent by God for your benefit. So you better be careful how you treat her. Because you have to ask to God for how you treat your wife. You better be considerate. You can't tell your wife, sh- shut up and sit down. You can't tell your wife, take your clothes off. I'm ready for sex. I heard I heard a non-married woman ask the question, can two can a can a man rape his wife? What kind of stupid know. question is that? Of course he can. Of course that's rape. That's why every man needs to be sexually considerate. This is her space. Still her space. You get an invitation sometimes, okay? And you want that. You want the woman to want you, mm-hmm. right? You want to be invited in, and you need her consent. Now, whatever that looks like, the consent, what does that look like? I don't know. This is where I'm lost. This is where I'm, I'm not lost. I need help. What would it look like to have consent? Let's say you're upset, and you don't want to be bothered right now. What does it look like? When a man wants to come and he wants to hug you or touch you anyway. Now you have to sit there and deal with that? You don't want to deal with that. So what would it look like for him to have to get consent first? What does it look like if, no, I, my emotions peak today. I don't want to have sex today. What does it look like if he wants to anyway? No, you don't. You can't just do that. You have to get consent. What does that look like? What would the consent? What, what, is, it that, what, what is it that you would want so that he'll know that this time you are invited to my space because I'm a special vessel and I'm here for your benefit not for your abuse and not for your use I'm here what I'm about to give you in this bedroom is a benefit to you you want you want to leave us a benefit to you let me give it to somebody else see if it benefit them that's a benefit that's a benefit to you and you don't get to just take it because that's rape you can't touch her whenever you want unless she she can give you a blanket consent and tell you okay you can rub my back whenever you want, for example. But there are some women who don't want you reaching between their legs whenever you want. Out in public. Maybe they don't want yeah. uh, kissing in public. I think kissing... It's I, time if, to if, shine if, down. if you don't want to kiss in public, I think that's a little... But that's an issue. 
But maybe I've seen people go overboard sometimes. Yeah. In I think. And you can tell a woman is not comfortable with that. That's great. You need her consent from that. So if that's a conversation, just write down the word consent. You guys can have that conversation on the way home. And this is a conversation that the man has nothing to do. You just have to accept whatever it is, however, I don't even know how to word this or how to ask this question. Or how to answer this question. Whatever it is, you are not allowed to touch or do or do whatever you want to me, whatever you want to, especially when I'm upset or whatever. You need my consent. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. That's your good thing. That's my good thing. We stop there or do we keep going? And obtain favor from the Lord. So my question is, if I'm no longer with my wife, if I separate from my wife, well, God forbid I divorce my wife, do I still have favor? Remember Freya? Remember what she was? Remember what her job was before? She's your wife. That's who she is. Before she was a tech analyst or whatever she was. Remember her background before? Mm-hmm. She's just willing to deal with it. Are you willing to deal with her background? Mm-hmm. Are you willing to deal with who she is, what makes her up? Or you got to change her. You want to change her from liking games or whatever it is that she is or whatever it is that she does. You want to change her or are you willing to deal with it? Her best achievements. The best achievement is that she's willing to work on herself to make her marriage work. That's the greatest thing a woman can do. She's better to put up with your raggedy behind to make her marriage work. Remember Freya? has a husband, Freya. <laughs> Freya is Freya's husband. That's all he is. That's all he needs to be. And his background, wait a minute, that looks the same. He's willing to deal with your stuff. You got stuff too. I gotta put up with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it ain't all. This ain't all beat up on the man. This is the man have to deal with you, and men have to deal with your issues too. But I'm willing to. That's gonna be my best achievement. My best achievement. I'm willing to deal with you. Well, however you are, however you come, whatever you got, I'm gonna deal with. We gonna work this out. I'm willing to work on myself too. Whatever I have to do to fix, and I understand I'm a mess. I know that. Tomorrow will be less of a mess. <laughs> and the next day will be less of a mess because I'm going to work on myself. And you're going to tell me over and over. And if, you, if I'm not listening, they come to say for doing it. Okay. And I'm going to be pleasant about it. I'm not going to be mad sitting here. Oh, you better hurry up and get done. Because as soon as you get done, I got a safe word for you too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be nice. We're going to be gentle. We're going to be cool about it. And I hope that there's something I said that don't. This is class two. I only got one more. Uh, y'all only give me one more next week or whatever. Well, I, guess one time. I hope this helps. Mm-hmm. That's all I got. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all. This went way over time. <laughs>